Well, today I'd like to offer you a thought that could change your life, a thought that could change your life for the better. So I encourage you to listen very closely because this one thought can be so transformational. To embrace this one thought, this one idea, this one concept can actually take us to a new dimension in our spiritual life and our day-to-day -day journey. Are you listening? Here's what I'd like to offer you. What if, what if you began to love your way through life? What if you began to love your way through life rather than fight your way, struggle your way, work your way, labor your way? What if you began to just love your way through life? Now, what does that look like for you? What would it look like for each and every one of you to begin to love your way? Every single day, waking up to this wonderful idea. Today I'm loving, and that's how I'm living. I'm living from the power and presence of love each and every day. What does that look like for you? Loving your way was really being, uh, making this our modus operandi. That is, making it our particular way or method of doing something. Especially one that is characteristic and very well established. So could you imagine? that is so characteristic and very well established in your day-to-day -day journey, that you wake up and every breathing moment you're loving your way through the day. Every moment as you move, you speak, as you live, as you breathe, you are loving your way through this journey of life. And love is that which is the vehicle that you are moving in and it's carrying you and working in and through you then this then truly becomes a secret for successful living. Loving your way through life is gonna bring about an immense change within and without. So let's take a look at loving your way through life. What we must do is first of all, capture this incredible energy called love. Capture it and put it to work. Years ago, I was with my partner Robert at the horse farm and there was a young stallion that had been released and they were doing their best to capture and harness the very power of this horse. It was one of those great chases to go on and try to lasso the horse, capture him and then to put a harness on him and to employ him and put him to work. And suddenly that power of this great mighty stallion, this horse was making changes and putting, pulling plows and pulling wagons and so many things were changing as well as carrying riders. Well, it's the same in our day-to-day -day journey, capturing the power of love. Getting out there, I'm gonna capture this energy and draw it in. I'm gonna embrace this energy. I'm going to harness it and I'm gonna take it to my day-to-day -day life and I'm going to employ it, being the general secret for our lives because this wonderful energy of love is this vibration of our thoughts, our actions, and our beliefs that has been raised to the highest level it can. That's right, energy frequencies come in different levels, and we might find that lower level frequency of energy that's filled with negativity and doubt and aspects of worry and stress, and those that uh, energy frequencies that rise up higher are filled with perfect peace, as Scott played that beautiful selection today. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. That peace then bringing us up to the wonderful levels of joy and complete love of that just is a full acceptance. This vibrational frequency changes in our life. And so what we wanna do is capture this energy. And when we live then from this vibrational level, what happens is we begin to attract things to our life. That's right, we begin to attract incredible things because we're living from life. Now we know that likes attract likes, right, in this world. And so when you're living from the highest level or frequency of life, living in the power of love, you're gonna attract then high level things to your life as well. First of all, that's what we really want. We don't want to attract this low energy. We don't want to attract more drama, chaos, negativity. What we really want in our life is to attract more of this great love that meets every need within our heart and our life. So what we want to do is begin to realize that as we capture, as we harness, as we employ this wonderful vibrational frequency called love, this wonderful power, this wonderful presence, 
we begin to use it every day. We are loving our way through life. So it begins with beginning to choose this higher frequency of living, making a choice each and every day. I choose to live out love. I choose, no matter what comes, when you are so tempted to give someone a piece of your mind or give them a word that maybe is not also positive or affirming, or maybe you are just angry and stressed and maybe you want to say things that aren't always appropriate, you choose, you make the choice when you're living from love. When you're allowing love to be that guiding force within your life, you choose this higher frequency. And then what happens is as you've chosen this and you live it out, you're going to attract responses that are also equal to that higher frequency. You change the world, you change your dynamic, you change your experience, you change everything. It all happens when we begin to love our way through this journey of life. Now, if you are not attracting good, the good that you desire in your life, maybe what you need to do is re-examine, are you living from love? Have you learned the very power of love and the ability to express it? Because as we express it, we become this radiating center of love. And we'll find that we become like a divine magnet. Key words here, radiating. When we begin to express love, we begin to radiate this wonderful God presence. We begin to radiate it into the world. We become like a lighthouse. You know how a lighthouse is this great beacon? It is this wonderful, uh, has this ability to transmit a message out into the world. Of, this is where home is. This is where safety is. Well, you become this kind of radiating being when you begin to express love constantly. And the more love you express, the more you radiate. And what happens is you become this divine magnet that draws to you. And this powerful attraction of all that is good begins to take place within your life. Just like the lighthouse then becomes um, a beacon that is drawing ships home, attracting them to the place of safety and harbor. Well, so it is that you then become that kind of person as you've learned to express love on a day-to-day -day basis. How often do you say, I love you? Well, you may say, I don't have someone in my life. I don't have a partner. I don't have a husband, spouse, wife. I don't have anyone. How, who do I say I love? Oh, but how about engaging this simple phrase, I love you in so many ways to the people that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Expressing love, vocalizing, giving word power to this wonderful feeling within your life is essential. You then become a radiating divine magnet that will attract amazing things. Love is an energy that when we have fully used it, amazing things happen, but here's our challenge. We're not fully using the power of love. We're not fully using it. It's an amazing energy force. And it's so transformational, but we don't use it to its fullest capacity. So let's take it to the max. Let's be the people who are truly living life from this perspective of love, that you're really embracing this. What happens then is we begin with this very concept of understanding love. Let's start there. For God is love. Love is God. God is love. And when we understand that what love literally looks like and what it feels like, it really looks and feels like God. And when we understand God, we understand love and this becomes this wonderful cycle within our life. First John chapter four, six says, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. All who live in love, all who live in love, live in God and God dwells, lives in them. So loving your way through this life is living God, living God every day, living love every day, living this divine power and presence every single day in your life and making this choice. Because what we understand is that God is love and all that God does is love. God loves us when we're right and God also loves us when we're wrong. You see, this is the impersonal nature of love. This divine love is so impersonal that it loves for the sake of loving. That's right. Love is there just for the sake of loving and is not 
personal and saying, oh, I love this one more, or showing favoritism or partiality in any way whatsoever. Love is not concerned with what or who it loves, nor with love coming back in return. It's not obsessed. I'm going to only love you if you love me back, or I'm only going to love a certain person or a certain thing. That's not true at all. For that which is divine love, that which is God, is impersonal and is loving each and every one. It's like the sun, the sun that is having its great joy and shining forth on all of nature. The sun doesn't decide, well, I'm going to shine only on you, but not on you, or I'm, I'm only going to radiate wonderful beams of, of light and energy to this portion or that portion, or when I'm upset, I'm not going to shine at all. That's not the nature of the sun. The sun shines and radiates and becomes this incredible energy that shines on each and every one, and that's the impersonal nature of God's love. And that's how we're called to live the life of love, how to live our way through this life by loving each and every day, by just loving and not showing any kind of favoritism, but dispersing, expressing, living out love to each and every one, no matter who they may be, because we certainly understand we are all one anyway. We're all connected. So let's love every portion, every part of us. We understand that we're just one big body, just like this physical body is one. And so we don't just say, I love the left hand more than the right hand, or that I say, I love my lips more than I love my heart, or I love my eyes more than I love my feet. How crazy that would be. We show a love that is showing no partiality and is very impersonal to all of our body. And that's exactly the way we're called to live out our love. First Corinthians chapter 13, 14 says, love suffereth long and is kind. Love envies not. Love is not proud or boastful. It's not puffed up. Describing this kind of love that we're called to live out if we're living our way through life with the power of love and allowing this love to unfold within our life in a great way, what happens is what we want to do is just live this kind of love, gracious, compassionate, concerned, a love that is caring, a love that is patient and kind at all times. Because when your heart is filled with love, what's going to happen is you will not be critical or irritable, but you're going to be divinely irresistible. That's right. You're going to be so irresistible because, wow, your heart is just radiating love. Oh, and isn't that what we all desire? Wouldn't we all love to be found irresistible? Well, I'm going to tell you, you are. You're irresistible to the goodness of God when you are just speaking, thinking, embracing, exercising, and expressing this divine love. John 13, 35 says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, everyone's going to know it. They're going to feel the love coming from your life. They're going to feel this. And as they experience it, they're going to say, Whew, I know that's a disciple of the teaching of Jesus. That's a disciple of the way of goodness. That's a, a disciple. I, I, I know they get it. I know they embrace it. I can feel it. I sense it because they're expressing love and they're living life from that wonderful energy of love. Let me tell you this. They're going to know that you are truly a disciple because what happens is as you live love, well, your thoughts are all about love. You're talking all about love and you're speaking very powerful, loving words. Charles Fillmore, a great teacher in the New Thought tradition and the founder of the Unity Movement writes uh, this, the more we talk about love, the stronger it grows in the consciousness. And if we persist in thinking loving thoughts and speaking loving words, we're sure to bring into our existence the feeling that real love is beyond description. And that is the love of God, this real love. So we want to be talking, thinking, speaking, exercising, expressing love, loving our way through life. You know what happens? We become a bridge builder. That's right. A uniter. We become someone who brings this world together. When we are li living, loving our way through life, we are transformational power and energy in this world. The divine mind, 
This love is one that brings us together and binds us together and creates this divine harmony that we so desire in this universe. What happens is when we are expressing divine love, well, we're creating a harmonizing, a unifying power and energy in this world. You know, as Scott plays the piano, we hear some beautiful notes in harmony with one another, notes that are in agreement with one another, notes that are supportive of one another. The sound is that of, that is harmonizing and is a sense of unity and support. Harmony then in music will dictate the mood of the chord. So when the notes are in harmony, when they're in agreement, they dictate the very mood of the chord that's being expressed. This agreement is the sound of unity. Oh, how beautiful our life is when we are loving our way through the journey each and every day. When we're living from that perspective, we are creating a world of harmony, beautiful music, things coming together in agreement that are supportive of one another. Loving our way through life also enables us to become a great healer. Because let me tell you this, when you are exercising the power of love, what happens is all misunderstandings move into an alignment, an adjustment happens. Now, maybe you have a disagreement. Maybe there's some challenge you're facing in your world with loved ones, family members, coworkers, whatever it may be. But as you are speaking love, living from love, it begins to pull things into harmony, into an adjustment, into a supportive nature of caring, that things begin to move into alignment with one another and change happens as we begin to express this love. Make your life and your affairs, well, filled with love and what happened is health and wholeness will also be yours. Because when you are permeating love through this body, when you are radiating it out, you're going to retract all good, and that good is gonna fill the cells and the very nature of your body with health and wholeness within you. Let me tell you this, people who have expressed love are the healthiest in the world. People who continually express anger, resentment, and uh, negativity, and begin, begin to speak words of stress and create drama and chaos in this world are the people who are shortening their days in this journey of this life. Loving our way through life changes how we see things. This is another great transition that happens within us because we're gonna to begin to see things totally different. We begin to see the good everywhere and in everything. Love is this inner quality that seeks good everywhere and in everybody and it insists that all is good. That's what love does. It insists all is good. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, if you are a parent, you may certainly know that you love your children. And others may point out that they're not always behaving the best, but you as a parent with your eyes of love only see them as angels, right? Now, of course, that's very true. I'm a grandparent and I have seven grandkids who are just angels. Why? Because I love them so much and I see them with great love. And their parents would say, uh, I'm sorry, Dad, my child's not a perfect angel. Oh, but yes, they are, because I love and adore them. I see the good in them at all times. I see the highest and best unfolding, and I'm refusing to see anything but good. Doesn't mean my head's in the sand. It means that I just love them so much that I know that no matter what they're going through, no matter what they're experiencing, it's for their highest and best. They're learning, they're growing, they're stretching. It's good. They're making some mistakes. Oh yes, they're learning through each and every uh, endeavor, each and everything that they go through. And it's good because when we are refusing to see anything but good, it causes then this quality of love to appear and the goodness to unfold even more so because your eyes are on the good. So living our way through this life from the perspective of love is amazing transformation. So I want to encourage you that the first thing we need to do as we capture all of this, as we harness what we're talking about, as we employ it, is to begin to rethink. Rethink our lives. The great work we have to do in life is quite often is to unlearn some of the things that we've been taught, to release and to let go, 
to unlearn some of the negative things, some of the uh, lessons that we've learned in life to be condemning, judgmental, uh, to be uh, looking at others in ways that maybe just say, yeah, well, you're not all that good, and you know, we want to tear people down. We need to unlearn that nature and release that, let that go, and to begin to rethink to retrain our thinking and to begin to think each and every thought from the power of love. I'm thinking thoughts that are encompassed and embraced in love. I'm putting parentheses around it. They're sort of guarding this thought. It's held within this context of love. And I want to retrain my thought. I want to retrain all my thinking. That when I think a thought, if I just say, whoa, 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 is it fitting within the parentheses that says all is love? And I'm speaking from that perspective. So as we engage in this spiritual discipline, we train our thoughts to move in the way that is healthy, wealthy, and fine. That is really good and bring unfolding blessing within our life. Quite often we don't train our children in life and they have to learn through trial and error because as parents, we haven't taken the time to really sit them down and say, let's learn this powerful lesson in life. Let's really embrace this. We just kind of let them go through trial and error. And what happens is then they have a difficult time. But if from the very beginning, we engage them in discipline about the power of love and saying, honey, what you did, does that come from love? What you said, is that expressed in love? What you are, uh, your actions, are they loving and kind? Begin to teach the children from their very early on age of the power of this love working for this is how we're called to live our life. Loving our way through life is one of the most powerful things we can do. So let's begin to retrain our thing, thinking and let's put love on the top of our list. This is priority one, that everything we're doing is love. Now today is Valentine's Day and there's a lot of focus on love in a wonderful physical way and, and people doing loving, kind things, but let this love then be on the top of our list for each and every day, that every day is a Valentine's Day. Every day is a day where I'm thinking and focusing on the wonderful power of love working through my life. Because the big question we're asking ourselves is, how do I navigate through this world? How do I navigate? How do I make it through this life in a way that can be successful? The world is creating these navigation tools. Yet today we find through scripture and the wisdom of the teaching that's available to us, that we know how to navigate through this world. We navigate through the icebergs and the sea of life. We can move through them and around them and allow them, uh, they don't harm us in any way when we love our way through life. So today I encourage you, to embrace this mantra. I am loving my way through life today. I am loving my way through life today. Put it as number one on your list and let that be your agenda. Not just Valentine's Day, but every day. Live out that perspective from the power of love. Amen. Thank you so much.